Good morning, church. Good morning. Man, turn to your neighbor and just tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank God for a beautiful day, beautiful weather, and uh, just a wonderful time that we can gather here together in the house of the Lord this morning. How many has just can say, the Lord has been good to me this week? The Lord has been good to me. Let's stand. Have a couple scriptures this morning. And we're going to open up in prayer. Psalms chapter 146, verse 5 and 6. And we do appreciate you being here this morning. If you're watching over the internet, we thank you for tuning in. Psalms 146, verse number 5. It says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is which keepeth truth forever. Pastor talked to us last Sunday about, about being happy, that, that we can be happy. How many is happy this morning? I said, how, how many of you is happy this morning? I say, I still have the joy of the Lord because we have hope in the Lord God this morning. Amen. That's how we can be happy all the time. Even when we go through uh, just tough times when we have bad days, we can still have that joy deep down inside because our hope is not in the world. Our hope is not in humanity. Our hope is in the God of heaven, the God that made the heaven, the earth, the stars, the moon, and all. Thank God. Thank God. So let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hearts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here today. God, we come here, Lord, to lift you up, to worship you. God, our hope is in you this morning. We believe, God, that you can do great things in this service today. We believe, God, that you're going to touch every heart this morning, everybody in this place. God, we know that great things are in store in, for this service, Lord, and we give you the praise. God, anoint the singing, anoint the preaching of your word. Move around these altars today, Lord. Just simply have your way in this place this morning. And God, we will give you the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you remain standing this morning as we open in worship?
How many of you know we have a great yes. position? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Sing it for the Lord. I'm so thankful for the Lord blessing our children and our teenagers here at the church. God has been so good to us. How many of you glad that the Lord has set you free this morning? Thank God I'm free this morning. I have a couple announcements. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Hannon to come and announce the ladies' night out. We've been announcing it for two um, Sundays now, but there is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board um, for our ladies' night out. It's coming up. It's um, October the 21st. We'll be going to Central Baptist in Dunn um, to see Shonda Pierce. If you don't know who that is, she's a Christian comedian. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we will, if you sign up on the bulletin board, I'll try to figure out riding, driving arrangements or you can ride by yourself. That's perfectly fine. Whatever you would like to do, just so I know you're coming. And the cost is $25. $25. So please sign up if you're wanting to go. Right. Senior Moments will be meeting at the Conkey Restaurant. Got it right. Give me a hand this morning. Hey, Amen. On Tuesday, October the 12th at 11.30 a.m. Um, fall Festival is right around the corner. October 31st, we'll have service that morning in the the fall festival will be right after church from 12 to 4 p.m. So we want you to stick around with us. We're going to have uh, food, inflatables. I mean, we're going to have other activities. It's going to be a great time. And then we have a Christmas play scheduled for de December the 12th. And practice for all the speaking parts will start on October the 6th. So we'll get those details to you. Um, we do appreciate the goodness of God. I'd like to say thank you to everyone that helped out at our um, youth service the other night, Friday night. Come on, ushers. Uh, we had a great turnout, great time, and uh, our young people got a lot of help. And we are so thankful for the Lord blessing our service that night. And I want to say again, thank you to all, to everyone that came out, to all, to all of our helpers, workers. We do appreciate your service for that, uh, for that youth night. How many know that the Lord will bless you? Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, it may not seem big in, in other people's eyes, but the Lord takes notice, and he'll bless you for it. And we do appreciate it so much. Um, we're coming to you this morning for tithes and offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank God for this service. Thank God for what we feel, Lord. We pray that you bless this offering. Let it meet the needs. God bless everyone here today. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with us this morning? Just a little while to stay here. Just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor. In the path that's always straight.
waiting to get there. I can't wait till he looks on me and he says, well done, my good and faithful servants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship God this morning. Jesus, we thank you for your presence in the house of God today. We thank you, Lord, that you haven't left us alone. And God, our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Jesus, God, for your blessings on us. Praise God. I want you to put your hands together and worship God this morning. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise here in God's house. So good to see you. Such a delight to see you in God's house. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24 through 27. So thankful for God's Word. Enjoyed the music this morning. And I want to say thank you for all those who came and helped with our Friday night uh, youth service. Had a great turnout and had a lot of young people here. And our altars were filled with young people seeking God, seeking the Lord, and being sensitive to the things of God. And if that's anything that we need nowadays, we need people who are sensitive to the things of the Lord. And so thankful for all of our young people here, our children and it always tickles me when they get up here singing. And, uh, you know, you never know what will what, happen when you get kids involved in things. <laughs> but that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to just get kids involved. You'll see young people singing in the choir, singing up here. Uh, I don't know. You may see young people taking up the offering. Who knows? But that's one of the things we get our young people. We try to, at least, get our young people involved in doing things. We don't want to just push them to the corner and say, well, we'll wait until you prove yourself. I mean, you know, if that's the way that we think about things, We'll never have any young people at the church. We have to throw them in the fire, so to speak. And they won't be burned, so don't worry about them. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24. This is the words of Jesus here. He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. Now, I want you to notice this. Jesus says, whosoever hears these sayings of mine. Not our sayings, not my sayings. Jesus says, if you listen to what I say, and if you build your life on what I say, and he says, and, and do them. I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. I want my house to be built on a rock, don't you? A steady, solid foundation that's not going to move or buckle on a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. When the winds blow, and when the rain comes, and when the thunder crashes, I want my foundation to be on Jesus Christ. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine, now listen to what he says. And if you hear these sayings of mine, and you don't do them, you just forget about them. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's the mindset you have. He shall be like unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And it doesn't take long for the rain to descend, and the floods to come, and the winds blow, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Terrible was the fall of it. The purpose of this scripture informs us, build your life on things eternal, not on things temporary that can pass away. I want to read also in Psalm 139, verse, verse number 14. 139, verse number 14. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. The Bible says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I have been made by the hands of God. Now somebody say amen. Marvelous are thy works. It's talking about me and you. We're marvelous. We have been built by God, designed by God, engineered by God. And our life, our very life is supposed to be built on the basis of Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Everything else is sinking sand, church. You know that? Everything else is quicksand and it'll take you under. But the scripture says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and my soul knoweth right well. That script, last part means my soul knows it. My soul knows it. I want to preach to you today on your value in God. Your value in God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all you're doing, all you've blessed us with. God, I pray that you bless me and help me to preach here this morning the, the everlasting, 
eternal word of God. We know that your scripture tells us that your word is forever settled in heaven. Your words are spirit and they are truth. And I pray that your words would sanctify us, God, cleanse us and, and order our steps. You tell us in the scripture that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Help us to hear the joyful sound of your word here this morning and we will delight in it. Let us be like trees that are planted by the rivers of water. Help us to stand strong in times of adversity and know that our value is not based on the world but our value is based in Jesus Christ. And Lord, we love you today. We praise you, God, today. There may be folks who are going through hard things here in this house. But God, we know that you can help us and meet us where we are. You can just draw us closer to the cross. And Father, I pray that you'd just do your work in here today. Do your work and just heal our bodies, heal our souls, and mend us in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts amen. Amen. Your value in God. You can be seated here this morning in the house of the Lord. Thank you for your attendance to the things of the Lord. It is my conviction, it's my belief that our value, who you are, comes from your identity in God. Now somebody shout the word identity. Identity. All right, let me hear you this morning. Identity in God. The scripture tells us, this is one of my favorite scriptures, you know it. You ought to know it because I've talked about it so many times. First Peter 2 and 9, talking about who we are talks about what our purpose is but you are a chosen generation amen a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people you know that if you are a child of God you are a peculiar person that you should show forth that's who we are we are peculiar we are in a in a in, in his we are his generation and this is what we do we show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light now, we are living these lives that God has given us, but brother and sister, we got to understand that this life is not all about us. It's not all about me. It's not all about what I do or what, 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 I can, what people can say about me or the things that, that I can have. If I build my life on myself and what I can do, brothers and sisters, I will be up to my neck in quicksand because I just can't make it through the storm. But if I build my life on the identity of God, then it doesn't matter what may come my way. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? You can survive the storms of life if you put your hope and your trust and you lean all your weight on Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of our faith see there's a lot of people this morning there's a lot of people possibly in this church building this morning who don't have their identity on Jesus. People feel like they're no good at times. People feel like they're worthless. People feel like they're, they're not any count. They're undervalued. People all over the country this morning woke up and they don't know if they even have a desire to live anymore. And I told it to you a couple uh, Wednesday nights ago. There is a serious problem. There is a pandemic in this nation of people who feel like their life is worthless. People who feel like their life has no value. And what people are doing when they get these feelings inside of their heart and inside of their mind, the enemy tells them that your life isn't worth anything. You're not worth, you don't have any value to anybody. So you might as well just end your life. There is a problem in this country and in this world. The devil is pressing and breathing down people's necks and telling Tell them then that you don't have a reason to live. And people, the sad thing of it is, people are listening to the voice of the world. They're listening to the voice of the devil. And what they're doing, they're ending their lives. They're committing suicide. That is a serious, serious problem. And the problem is people feel undervalued. They feel like they're worthless. They feel like they don't matter. They feel like they're not good enough. And no matter how much people do or say or what, whatever, th every, anything that happens, they feel like I am not good enough. And the problem is, is because people have believed lies that come straight from Satan. People have believed lies that come straight from this world and they've come straight from the flesh. And I want to tell you about three of these lies, three of these sandy foundations that people have built their lives on. And what happens when people build their lives on this sandy foundation? Eventually the sand begins to give way and they start questioning everything about this. like a person who leans his ladder against the of the wrong building and it gets to the top at the end of his life and he says I've wasted my entire life because I've believed the lies of somebody who didn't have my best interest in mind I want to tell you one of these first things today we the devil tells us and this is a sound sandy foundation that says I get my value based on what I do 
I get my value based on what I do. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Now this is real. We do feel good when we do things, when we have success in life, when we are able to build things and accomplish things and we're able to make things out of our life, when we're able to do things. I mean, there's a sense of accomplishment whenever we have done things. We've created something. We're doing good. But your value today, brother and sister, is not based on the things that you do. Because this is the problem. There will be a time in your life that the things that you used to do you just can't do them anymore I'm a young man I can do a lot of things I can get up here and preach for three hours straight if I wanted to but there will come a day where I'm old in age and my energy will give out and sometimes it does give out and I probably won't even be able to preach for 20 or 15 minutes see I can't base my value on what I do You can't base your value on the fact that you could work 80 hours a week and I'm a working man because one of these days your body's going to wear out and you won't be able to work 80 hours a day. I don't know if this makes any sense what I'm saying this morning. When, when, When you do things, it makes you feel valuable, you feel good. But when you fail and you're not able to do the things that you used to do, what happens is we feel no value. We feel unhappy, we feel depressed, and we think, where's my life? What's my life? See, if you base your life on the sandy foundation of what I do, Jesus says, great will be the fall of it. Amen. Now, the second lie I want to tell you that maybe you've listened to this morning, maybe you've heard all your life, is your value is based on what other people say about you. And that's a very, very powerful thing because whenever people talk good about you, we feel good, don't we? When somebody says something nice to you, when somebody says you've done a good job or you're the best I've ever seen and I love you so much, we feel great. We feel wonderful. But what about those times whenever somebody says something to you that that rubs you the wrong way? Somebody talks behind your back or somebody criticizes you or your boss man says one week you're doing a great job but the next week he pulls you in the office and says you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't, shouldn't have acted that way because... What, what, what people say about us changes like the wind. It changes like the foundations of the sand. One day somebody can say something good about you, and the next day somebody can drag you through the dirt. So you can't base your identity on what people say about you. Because one day it's good, next day it's bad. Building their life on the sand. So that's the second lie. First lie is, is I am what I do. My value comes from what I do. The second lie is my value comes from what people say about me. And the third lie that I want to share with you before I preach here this morning is this. People think that my value comes from what I have. The things that I can accumulate, stuff I can put in my back pocket, things I can hang on my walls. So you may have a good job, you may have good family, you may have good finances, you may have all these things. But let me tell you, when we have everything that we can get and it's right in our hands, sure we're happy, we're blessed, joy unspeakable and full of glory. But what about those times where you used to have a lot of money but now you're living paycheck to paycheck? What about those days where you used to have good parents but your parents have passed away? and your family's acting crazy and the things that you used to have I used to have good health I used to have a good job I used to have these things they were right here in my hand but they slipped through my fingers and the things that I used to have I just don't have anymore and eventually we look and, and say where did it go and one day we've got it next day we don't If you live your life based on that, one day you'll be up, the next day you'll be down, one day you'll be up, the next day you'll be down. God never called you to live that type of life where you are carried to and fro with every wind of doctrine. God never wanted for you to live your life where you are based and built on the sand. God never wanted you, called you to live your life where you're building on something that was moving and shifting like the sand. Are you hearing what I'm saying here in the house of God? See, is your value based on what you do? No. Is your value based on what you see or what you say? No. And no, what people say about you. Is your value based on what you have? No. It's based on Jesus Christ and what he says. His word. He said in the Bible, if you believe what I tell you, you'll have everlasting eternal life that is built on the solid rock, which is the words of Christ Jesus our Savior. See, a lot of energy goes into these three things. What I do, what others say about me, and what I have. 
A lot of energy goes into that. When people talk well of you, you can do anything. That's great. And I can have anything. That's great. I'm excited. I'm happy. It's wonderful. But when people start talking bad, when I start things start slipping through my fingers and I can't do the things that I used to do, we start losing out. And depression starts creeping in. And people start feeling like, where's my life going? How am I going to be anybody or do anything anymore? My life is cast down and it's like David why art thou cast down oh my soul why art thou disquieted within me people are hoping in the wrong things you hearing what I'm saying this morning if our lives are based on these things then our lives naturally will go up and down up and down up and down in and out back and forth our lives become confused and chaotically confused and sporadic and when we live like this We become people who feel meaningless. We become people who feel worthless. We become people who feel like life is pointless. Because instead of basing our identity on God, we place hope in things that change. Hope in things that change. People, hoping in people, hoping in stuff. And when life is lived based on these three things, it's a recipe for disaster. Jesus said in his word, great will be the fall of it. When you put your hope in this world, brothers and sisters here this morning, it'll leave you empty. It'll leave you longing for more, searching and scraping and wondering where's my life? How's my life? What am I doing? Don't build your hopes on things that are wishy-washy. Don't build your hopes on things that are sandy. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your life on the word of God that is forever settled in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. For your life is hid with Christ in God. Set your mind on things above. See, you don't have to live life based on these things. What you do, what people say, how you feel. Because it's changing all the time. What you have, those things are fleeting. It's a sandy foundation. And this whole thing, these three things I talked to you about, these are lies. It's not true what I do, what other people say about me, what I have. That is not the way to live your life. And if you are living your life that way, then I don't have to tell you anything. You'll find out real quick that this is not the way to live my life. This is the worst way that you can live your life. And Jesus actually encountered these lies when he was tempted by Satan after 40 days, hadn't eaten anything in the wilderness. The devil, Satan, came to him and he says, why don't you do something to me to show your value? And Satan said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? In other words, the devil's saying, why don't you do something and show me and show the world where your value lies. And you know what happened? Jesus didn't do a thing. He said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then Satan carried Jesus up to the high part of the temple, the pinnacle of the temple, what the scripture says. And Satan says, why don't you just jump off here and the angels will catch you. In other words, what Satan was saying, jump off of here and the angels will catch you. And everybody will look and say, wow. Isn't he wonderful? He's worthy to be catched. And people will say good things about you and people will applaud you because you know just like I do that uh, the angels just don't catch anybody, do they? And Satan says they'll catch you and everybody will look around and say you are worthy to be catched. You are wonderful. You are great. But Jesus, he doesn't do that. Then the Bible says that, that Satan took Jesus up to an exceeding high mountain. Highest mountain there was. I don't know. The scripture says exceeding high mountain. And he shows them the kingdoms of the world. Everything there is to have. And Satan says, if you bow down and worship me, you will have everything in your hands. And you know what Jesus says? It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what people say about me. It doesn't matter what I have. Life is more than those three things, brothers and sisters, this morning. And what Jesus says, he says, get thee hence, Satan, because he knows all that's a lie. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him 
only shall thou serve. Jesus is saying this way of living. What I do in things, what the way I want to do it. Doing things just to please somebody else and accumulating all this stuff. That is nothing but a lie and that will set you up for failure. What you have to do is tell these lies to get out of your life and serve the Lord according to the, the word that he said. He said if you do what I tell you to do, if you listen to my sermon, Jesus says, the sermon on the mount, then you will be like a man or a woman who builds his home on sure and steady foundation. And the wind will blow and the rain will come and the thunder will crash but the house is not going to go anywhere because you build it on what Jesus says. Not on what you can do. Not on what they say. And not on what you have. But you build it on the words of Jesus. See today church you are valuable based on what not 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 what you do, not what people say, not what you have. You are valuable because you are God's creation. You are a child of God. Just like these little children, these teenagers that stood up here. We value them so much because we know they aren't just regular people. These are God's people. I value you as the pastor of this church because I know that you are God's creation. You are God's people. You have value. Can I tell you again? You have value because you are God's creation fearfully and wonderfully made. And this is the problem. This is where it gets so serious today. The devil tells them you don't have no value. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. You're worthless. You're not good enough. What have you done? Does anybody say anything good about you? These are the words of the enemy. What do you have? You don't have anything anymore. You used to have it, now it's gone. They used to talk good about you, now they don't. You used to could do a lot of stuff, but now you can't. And people listen to the words of that devil. They listen to those lies. And they get in such a place of despair and such a place of hopelessness that they think, where is my value? I don't have any value. And he's right. And people get to a place where there's no hope left in their life. God, I submit to you here this morning that you do have value. You are worth something. And where the devil says that you're not good enough, you are good enough. And the very fact that you are breathing here this morning, breathing, sucking in God's air, tells me that you do have value. Tells me that you are worth something. The scripture says that you are God's peculiar treasure, His treasure. Like a treasure chest full of diamonds and rubies and gold and gems. When God looks at you, He doesn't see just gold. He sees something more precious than that. You know, church, he loved you so much he sent his son to die on the cross for you. Do you know that? There's a story. You know, you, you've got your value because you come from God. You are a child of the Lord. You come from the source, the same God who made the moon and the stars and put the, the ocean in the, in the land or wherever, however he did it. And he told the ocean, hey, ocean, you can only come this far and that's it. The same God that made all that is the same God who made your life. And he made your life a blueprint. He's painting your life. He created you. He's ordering your steps. You do have value this morning, church. Because God is your God. God is your father. 2,000 years ago on the cross, he died for you because you are that valuable. There's a man, I was going to tell a story, I'm going to tell it now. He walked into his friend's house. His friend was a millionaire. I wish I had some millionaire friends. <laughs> Maybe he was a billionaire, I don't know. This is the way the story goes. He walked into his friend's house. His friend was a millionaire. And he walked down the corridor in this hallway. And he saw one beautiful painting after another. He saw a painting that was a landscape. He saw a painting that was a uh, beautiful building. These beautiful, immaculate, wonderful paintings. And they weren't just copies or prints. They were, you could see the, the brush strokes on, on, the, on the canvas. And he looked at them. And then there in the middle, amongst all of it, there was this one painting. It was smaller than the rest, but there were lights shining down on this. Evidently, it was the centerpiece of his beautiful art collection. And he was looking at it, and he was thinking to himself, now, this isn't as pretty as the rest of them. This is, is actually ugly compared to all the rest of them. 
And he was thinking to himself, it looks like a child painted this picture. But evidently, it's the, it's the best one there is here. And then his friend, his millionaire friend, came up and said, hey, what is going on with this painting that's right here? And he said, you know, that's a million-dollar painting right there. He said, really? <laughs> Don't look like it. And then the man said, it's a Pablo Picasso painting. Pablo Picasso painted that picture there. He said, but it's ugly. Look at it. And the man said, the value of that painting, not in the painting itself, it comes from the painter, the creator, the one who took the paintbrush, dipped it in the paint, and with his supposed genius mind of a painter, painted it and created it and made something that was brilliant and supposedly beautiful. But above all that, it was worth a million dollars. See, today I want to tell you something, church. You may feel like you have no value. You may feel like you have no worth. You may feel just like those paintings on the wall. You see somebody else who's beautiful. You see something else who's wonderful. You see, it looks like they have their life together. It looks like everything that they are doing is wonderful. But this is the point I want to tell you, church. This is what I want you to understand in your heart. God's lights are shining on you. God's highlighting you. Every breath you take, it comes from the Lord. The scripture tells us that the very hairs on the top of your head are numbered. That's how much he cares for you. The scripture says that, don't, don't the sparrows, they just they cost a couple of pennies. But God sees the sparrows when they fall to the ground. He knows the lilies of the field. He, he, he covers, he clothes the lilies of the field. And if God knows the small little things that go on in this life, if he knows the hairs on your head, he knows about you and you've got value. He knows your thoughts. Thoughts are far off, church. He knows when you come in and when you go out. He knows when you rise. He knows when you fall. He knows when you're going through depression. He knows when you're going through grief. He knows when you're going through pain. Never think, not for one moment, never give the devil an inch and say to yourself, I don't have any value. That is a lie from the devil. Never say to yourself that I don't matter and I'm not good enough. That is a lie from the devil. Don't compare yourself to everybody else's life. Don't compare yourself to everybody else's beauty. God made you the way that you are. You are his peculiar treasure. You are God's and he is in the, you are in the hollow of his hand and he doesn't forget about you and God loves you so much that he went to the edge of the world for you and he still goes there for you church can somebody say amen in the house of the Lord here this morning I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made really I mean there's people really they think really pastor am I really fearfully and wonderfully made I don't feel like it I don't look like it it's not what everybody else is telling me. It doesn't matter what everybody else is telling you. Let God be true and everybody else a liar. All that matters is the opinion of God in your life. That's all that matters. I want to tell you something. God loves you today with an everlasting love. He loves you whether you're up or whether you're down. God loves you with an everlasting love. You are held in the hollow of His hand. It doesn't matter what you do. When it comes to God, God says, whatever, I forgive you. I forgive you. doesn't matter what you do. You just got to call upon God. doesn't matter what people say. Listen to what the scripture says. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Does not matter what you have. God doesn't need what you have anyways. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hallelujah. He's got it. It's all his anyways. And we are just stewards of what God has. God doesn't need anything that you've got. But what God does have, he's got you in his hands. Oh, church, when I was nothing, when I had nothing, when you were nothing, when you had nothing, you still had God. And God still loved you. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, God loved me. Church, this morning you do got value. Maybe you haven't heard that in a while. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to you. Maybe it's just empty words. But you do have value.
is the thing about people. This is the thing about people. The ones who are going through the most, those are the ones you would never suspect. The ones who are fighting the hardest. You look on the outside, they're the ones that have everything together. They're the ones that have everything looks okay. But inside their minds and inside their heart is a battle, and there's turmoil, there's despair, and there's something in there reaching out for hope. Maybe that's you this morning. To everybody else, you look fine. To everybody else, you look fine. You're great. You're good to go. But only you know and only God knows the things that you wrestle with in your heart. You do have value. You are loved. Somebody does care for you. Somebody does appreciate you. You are good enough. You are blessed and highly favored. No matter what they say. No matter what the devil says. Our value is not contingent on how you feel. It's based on who you are in God. You can't go by feelings this morning. Don't estimate your relationship on God based on your feelings. One day you feel good. You know that. One day you feel bad. That doesn't mean that God's left you or God's forsaken you. One day you'll have pain. One day you'll be doing great. One day you'll have health. One day your health's gone. That doesn't mean that the judgment of God is upon you. Just cause your life goes up and downs based on your feelings. Feelings are like the fleeting sands on the shore. You have to go by the word of God that never changes. Go by the word of God that is everlasting, the principles of God. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not according to the counsels of this world or the ungodly, but is like the tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That's what God has done for us, brothers and sisters. He's planted us by the rivers of water. Let the rivers go by. Let the sands wash away. But I'm going to stand straight up with God and I'll never be moved because my feet are established in Jesus' name. Now somebody praise God in the house of the Lord this morning. Don't let your worship hinge on how you feel. You play, if you, you do that, you're playing into the hand of the devil. He'll give you, he'll, make a, he'll work a way to give you a bad day on Wednesday when it's time to come to church. And then you know what he'll do? He'll watch you when you go in. He said, they ain't going to worship God. <laughs> Look at them because I give them a bad day. I've messed with their feelings. I've messed with their emotions. But you know what you have to do? See, the devil will mess with you on a Sunday morning, especially if you got three kids, especially if you got a family, especially if you, you know, didn't have a good Saturday. The devil's sitting back watching. I'll mess them about so much, I, they'll lose their joy. And whenever they get to the house of God on Sunday morning, they're not going to worship God. They're not going to praise God because the devil's sitting back saying, I've messed with them so much, I've stripped their joy away. I've taken it away from them. And you know what, I don't, I mean, I'm just kind of ruminating on this thought right here. I, I, I refuse to play into the hand of the devil. I refuse to fall victim to the tricks and the traps and the schemes and the wiles of the devil. Not going to happen. See, the thing with it is, church, you may have a horrible day. You might have had a horrible morning. And the devil's saying, they won't praise God. What are you going to do? You've got to be a one that overrides your feelings, overrides your emotions. And you say, well, whatever happened, happened. I'm going to praise God anyways. Because I don't know what you came to do, church, this morning. But I came to praise the Lord. Oh, God, help me today. The point I'm trying to make is you can't go off of your feelings all the time. You feel bad, you got to praise God anyways. You feel good, wonderful, praise God anyways. And don't think that I'm minimizing our feelings and there are times where our feelings are true and we got to validate our feelings and understand our emotions. I'm not saying you have to walk around callous, empty heart and hard-headed all day, but you got to get to a point one time you got to understand that the devil is trying to strip every bit of joy out of your life. He's trying to strip every bit of peace out of your life. And you got to say, I'm not today, devil. <laughs> Not today, Satan. That's what Jesus did, didn't he? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. All right, I'm almost done. I'm not going to preach too much longer. See, your life might be up and down. Don't let your worship hinge on how you feel.
Because if you do that, you're living life on the sand. You're living life on the shore. Oh, my. So in closing, I want to tell you that life is not about what you do. It's about what God can do in your life. Hear what I'm saying, church. He can change your life. He can change your life. Snap those chains that bind you. Nothing is impossible with God. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? God can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can even ask or think. It's not about what we can do. It's about what He does. Number two. Life is not about what other people say about you. You want to drive yourself crazy? Just, just give too much thought about what people say. It's not about what others say. It's about what God says. And His opinion is the only opinion that matters. God's opinion matters more than any other. It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Some people might think that you're substandard, you're not a good enough worker, you're not smart enough, you're not strong enough, you're not fast enough, you're not quick enough, you're not, you're not pretty enough, you're not a good enough mother, you're not a good enough father, you're not educated enough, you don't have enough experience. To be sure, something that I just said fell in your lap. But God thinks so much of you that he sent his only begotten son to be reviled, to be despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, to be whipped, to be beaten, to be spit on, to have nails driven through his hands, through his feet. He thinks so much of you. He took a crown of thorns on his head, and he hung on that cross. Because like the old song says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Or you know how it goes. Never forget, never forget the opinion of God matters more than anything. Let God be true and every man a liar. And number three, life is not about what you have. Stuff can slip through your fingers in a heartbeat. Your life can change forever in a, in a matter of minutes. You can walk out of this place here this morning and you can get a phone call or you can listen to that voicemail and it can change your life for the rest of your life. Life is not about what you have because the, the reality of it is at one moment in your life you may have it all. The next moment it may all be gone. I mean, Pastor, where do you get that? Well, look at the book of Job. Job had everything. Job had it all, everything a man could wish for. But in a moment's notice, it was all gone. But what did Job do? He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. What I had never mattered anyways. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Life is not about what you have, it's about what God has. You might not feel it. This morning, I, I truly believe that God has you right in His arms. And my prayer this morning for you, church, is that you allow God to hold you. You will allow God to hold you. How many of you have ever tried to hold a two-year-old who didn't want to be held? And you know, as a father, I've got Heidi. She's my, I can't pick up Caroline anymore. I did not too long ago. I said, let me pick you up and hold you again. She's big. Can't hold her like I used to. Elaine, my middle girl, she's seven. I can still pick her up. I can still hold her. But not for long. Daddy put me down. <laughs> but Heidi, she's two years old. Perfect age to be held. And there are so many times where I pick her up. She don't want to be held. She's kicking. She's pushing. She's, she just don't want it. But then there are times where I can pick her up. And I say, give me a hug. And she puts her little head. And she squeezes me. And you can feel that touch. You can feel that squeeze. Now this is the point I'm trying to make. Whenever I pick her up and she hugs me, I feel that love. I, I can feel it. It transcends. It transcends 
something that's physical. It's, it's almost emotional, spiritual. It's like a love that comes from God. But there are so many times in our life where we are like that two-year-old child. God just wants to hold you. God just wants to pick you up. But we're squirming. We're kicking. We're pushing. I don't want to be held right now. Maybe you can hold me later, but not right now. Oh, let God hold you this morning, church. Close your eyes and bow your heads this morning. Let God hold you in here. Maybe some of the words I've said this morning, you're thinking, I don't think that. I don't worry about that. I don't go through that. But maybe there's one in here this morning who says, Pastor, everything you said is something I'm struggling with. The devil tells me all the time I'm not good enough. The devil tells me all the time I'm not pretty enough. The devil tells me all the time that my life is not as beautiful as their life. The devil tells me all the time I just feel miserable. I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm second rate. I feel like I'm second class. And I feel like whenever people look at me, they don't think good of me. They think bad of me and they look down on me. I want to tell you, don't you ever... Don't you ever think that you are not good enough. Don't you ever think that nobody cares for you or nobody loves you. We know Jesus loves you. We know Jesus cares. But there's a church here that loves you and a church here that cares for you. There's a pastor preaching this morning telling you if you don't have anybody that loves you. This pastor cares for you. This pastor sees value in you. Listen to the words of Jesus. He loves you with an everlasting love. Maybe this morning you need to pray about this stuff. You need to shake it off. and You need to ask God, God, cover me. Help me. And help me to just be held in your arms. Anybody here this morning need that? They just need to be held in the arms of the Lord and feel His love. I mean, church, I want to feel the love of God at times. I don't want to just know it's a fact or know it's a truth. I, I, want, to be, I want to feel the loving arms of God wrap around me. And church, I want to tell you, you can feel that. You can feel that. As you're sitting in your seat, thinking about these things, I, I would ask you to stand here in this building. If there's anybody who wants to come and kneel and pray and just kneel at the feet of Jesus this morning and say, God, let me feel your presence once again. Let me feel your love. Is there anybody in this house who just wants to get into the presence of Jesus? God, wash away the world. Wash away these negative thoughts. Wash away the pain. Wash away these things. And create within me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm not going to listen to the lies of Satan, but I'm going to trust in your truth. That if you are for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. There is no weapon formed against you, church, that will ever prosper. Don't wait till it's too late to give it all to God. I want to ask you if there's anybody in this church this morning who's facing these things. Let's pray. Let's pray and ask God, God, help me. God, touch me. God, let me feel your presence again. Oh, Jesus, I want to feel your covering. Let me hide in the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would be my buckler, my shield. In the time of trouble, God, you'll hide me in your pavilion. Jesus, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. I praise you, God. Church, wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hearts and hands to the Lord. God, fill me again. Fill me to the uttermost. Let's pray together in this sanctuary this morning. Let's pray together. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hearts. Oh, Jesus, I want to feel you again. Touch God. You're more real than yes, Jesus. the ground I'm standing oh, on. You're more real than the breath in my lungs. Your 
soften your heart this morning. God, I pray that you would soften our hearts, that we would be sensitive to the things of the Lord. Oh God, just do your work. Help me this morning. I'll cast all my cares upon you, God, for I know that you care for me, Lord. There's no mountain that's too high. There's no valley that's too low. There's no problem that's too hard. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. your hands and worship God. Jesus, I'm going to praise you through it all. I'll praise you at all times. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Just praise you. pray, Lord, for security. I pray for confidence. I pray, God, for those things that you can give, a solid rock foundational faith, Lord, that only comes by you. It comes from you, and it comes in you. Help us to understand our value is not in this world. Our value is not in the things of the world or the lust of the world or the pride of life, but it comes from God who abides forever. Jesus, we praise you. We praise you today in this wonderful sanctuary. We give you thanks. We lift up our lives to you, Jesus. Our lives are not our own. We're just passing through. Oh, God, we're pilgrims in a far-off country. But, Lord, we're looking for a city that's got foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise here this morning? Yeah. I want to tell you one thing before I go. David said in the scripture, he said, why art thou? He questioned himself. He said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? He asked, why, why am I feeling the things that I'm feeling? Why am I going through the things that I'm going through? I've had a great life. I've been blessed. But God, why am I dealing with the things I'm dealing with? But then he answers the question later in the scripture. He says the answer to it all is the hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Church, I want to tell you, if you're looking for hope in this world, you'll never find it. You will never find it. If you think you found it, you will be disappointed because there is no hope to be found in this world besides Jesus, except Jesus. We're going to stretch our hands this way, church, and ask God to continue to bless, continue to move. 
God, keep your hand upon our young people. Let us have solid faith in God, the rock, our redeemer, who has never moved. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. I know that you are mine, and I am yours, and you hold me perpetually in your arms. And I know that I will never slip out because no man will slip out of the hand of the Lord. God, bless us and keep us. We praise you. We lift up our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Keep your hand on us. And we love you. And everybody shouts amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise like you mean it this morning. Praise God in the sanctuary. We love you, Jesus. God bless, church. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and have a good week. And I'll see you Wednesday night. Wednesday night service. Don't forget Wednesday.